Hello everyone, welcome to Galleria. I have Cabana here with me in the place to be. Yeah. What's up, what's up? What's good, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. A little that's tired, good. but it's good. A little tired too. <laughs> right, but that's how you know you work hard. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you have been working, I'm glad you said that because you have been working your ass off this year. Thank you, thank you. Like, super crazy. Yeah. Um, I was trying to, re when I was getting all your information and stuff together, I was trying to remember how I started following you. I know it was for music, but it was like, I would see your page. You know how Instagram algorithm is. Like, yeah. if you don't interact often, it'll fade away. Mm -hmm. But you just, like, kept popping up this year, like, dropping this, dropping this, interviews here. It's just crazy. What's, how do you feel about your 2022? My 2022 has been a really progressive year for me. Mm -hmm. um, I lost a lot of friends. Oh, man. Not lost friends, like, they died or anything. Oh, okay. I lost friends as far as... Just relationships went left. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you kind of grow apart from people, and sometimes success requires uh, uh, elevation mm -hmm. and separation. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, I'm 2022. God been blessing me, man. For real. Mm -hmm. um, let's start off. You had dropped, um, well, recently you just dropped uh, Before Your Eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I love Before Your Eyes. I love the visual. Talk about making that song and I feel like you were very particular with this one. And let me know if I'm wrong. No, nah, you're definitely right. Before your eyes, I just had the, it's a lot of stuff that's been wearing on my heart for mm -hmm. a minute. You know, dealing with the music industry, it's a lot of shady people, a lot of people that come to you like they're your friends, mm -hmm. or a lot of people uh, that say they're rocking with you, but then as soon as things go left, they act like they never knew you. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody help you, they try to throw it back in your face. So before your eyes, it was just, everybody has a breaking point. I just got to my point when mm -hmm. I just had to clear the air because I'm accomplishing things. Yeah. You feel me? My track record is strong. Mm -hmm. and sometimes you got to remind people because people act like they forgot. Mm -hmm. Forgot who you are. So, Good point. So it is. How long have you been doing music? I've been making music. I've been taking music serious for the past two years, but mm -hmm. I've always been making music for like the past 10 years. Um, when I say take it seriously, I mean, take it seriously as in, like, really, um, you know, in the industry type. Yeah. But for the past 10 or so years, I've been creating. making music as a form of therapy because I can sit here and talk to you. I know we don't know each other that well, mm -hmm. but who's to say that me and you have a conversation and you really care about what I'm saying? Right. You know, right? Or, you know, but when I step in front of that mic, that's the only time that I could talk, uh, I can express my feelings. And not have to worry about nobody running to tell my telling mm -hmm. my business. Nobody running to be like or judging me, you know what I mean? Right. So yeah. Right. Do you feel like there are I mean, just from what you know now, especially because you say you learned a lot this year, yeah. what are some things you would tell yourself from when you first started? Like some feedback you would give to your younger self? The most important feedback I would say that I uh not that I wish but I would tell somebody like my younger self or even the, the youngest. Or like an upcoming artist. Yeah, right. Yeah, is find God, believe in God, walk in your purpose, and get, just give it to him. Anything mm. that you're nervous about, you're worried about, give it to God. Because once you give it to him, he's going to live through you. And however life is supposed to go is how it's going to go. Mm. You feel me? So give it to God first. Second thing would be uh, be confident in what you do and never let anybody tell you that Never let anybody tell you that um, the way you feel is wrong. Because if mm. you feel that way, it's genuine. And go with your instincts. Because there's a lot of things people talk me out of. But then I look a couple years later and I see other people doing what I was talking about. And I was right. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. I do feel like you are very forward thinking. Um, just in the way that you've been moving this year. Um, you've been having some really big interviews, including mm. Breakfast Club. That was super dope. You had the billboard up in Times Square. What are like? What do you feel like is one of your favorite accomplishments? And where does all of that like drive for you to keep hitting all of these things off of a checklist, essentially coming from? I'm gonna be real with you, right? I can sit here, like you said, I didn't did Power 105, mm -hmm. Breakfast Club. I didn't had the billboard in Times 105. Square. Yeah, billboard in Times Square. I performed at AT and T Stadium, the Dallas Cowboys Arena. Mm -hmm. I can sit here and tell you all of my accomplishments and tell you that it makes me feel good. Well, I drive Rolls Royces and Lamborghinis and stuff like that. But 
the thing that keeps me going that I enjoy way more than all of that stuff is my dad or my mom or my family saying, mm. yo, I'm proud of you. That okay. means more than anything to me. I me. think so too. I feel like even, I think that's just like a common thing um, being a young adult, like, it, nothing matter. It's like at the end of the day, you still want you know your family and the people that are around yeah. you to still kind of just be like yeah, yeah like the that's family. It. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Make your people proud. And I really want my family to be at peace. So that's so what keeps me going is you know I want to I just want to make sure all my family's good. Yeah. And stable. Mm -hmm. Financially, emotionally, spiritually, just everything. How do they feel about your music and like what was the support like when you first started from coming from your family? <laughs> When I, my mom, she always was my ride or die. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. She always was my ride or die. My pops never really understood, though. He was like, yo, you play basketball, you go to college and you get a degree. Mm. But he ain't really, my pops, I'm not gonna lie. And this is why 2020, uh, 2022 has been my favorite year mm -hmm. because I finally got my dad's support. Like, he comes right. to my shows now. He hype, like, he hype mm. about it, you feel me? So um, he didn't really understand in the beginning. My other family, like outside surrounding family, not my immediate family. Right. You know, when you do things like music, they're just like, it's never going to work. Mm -hmm. Or that's not, that's not, a, it's never going to happen. It's not a real job. It's not, it's not that. But now, fast forward, the same people that said that, when you see me on Times Square, mm -hmm. they like, even, oh. Okay. Even, even somebody, grandma knew that that's a big deal. Yeah. You feel me? You see me doing all this stuff. Now they scratching their head, like, yo, we love you. I support mm -hmm. you. But, I could be, I could have animosity towards them, but you gotta understand that nobody's gonna see a vision how you mm -hmm. see your vision. That's it just so takes a long time to get there. That's mm -hmm. all. Talk about just kind of going back to this idea of you being so forward thinking. You also have other businesses. So I, I remember I wanted to go, I was going to go to Miami and yeah. they bluffed, but we was going to talk about getting the um, jet skis. Yeah. Talk about like being able to learn about that and have that as an option to be able to offer the people around you or the people you run into? Um, so, you know, I have like Jesky Company. I broke deals for like exotic rental cars, mm -hmm. Lamborghinis, rapes, all that stuff. Um, I'm getting into yachts. So basically, the way that my mind works, mm -hmm. one day when I was young, I went out there, got me a, a Rolls Royce rape. I mm -hmm. paid about 1200 for one day. Mm -hmm. And after that, I came home, I was like, man, I done paid twelve hundred for this. So when I thought to myself, I'm like, yo, let me figure out a way to make money off of everything that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Right? And then I start turning my liabilities into my assets. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like the key is you just anything that you enjoy, figure out how you can make money off of it. Mm -hmm. And then do your business like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So let's go back, let's get into some music. Yeah. Um out of all of your singles out of um, West Baltimore Love Story. What is probably like one of your favorites? Favorite songs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My all time favorite song right now. Before y'all, it's kind of crazy. Okay, yeah. But, 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 <laughs> but my all time favorite song, the one that touched my heart to this day, mm. is a song called Ruskin Ed. Okay, right. I don't remember that one. Yeah, it's a song called Ruskin Ed, and I'm basically talking about. Um, how where things went left between me and my first love, mm -hmm. you feel me? How she moved on to this day, and she got a new dude, and she got a baby now. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just really, That's raw. I'm really pouring out my heart, like for real, and okay. showing like my true vulnerability and stuff like that. But I give you the rundown on how we met, how it started, where we was at in the middle, and how it ended, mm -hmm. and how it could have been an alternate ending had I did something else. You feel wow. Me? It's kind of dope. Do you write or do you freestyle or do you like have a mix depending on what you're doing? Because uh, I, I know now that you yeah. like, I feel like you're more focused with the singing. Yeah. So talk about that. Um. Yeah, I don't write. Okay. I don't write because um, I feel like when you write, it has to come from your mind, right? Because you know your mind can play mm -hmm. tricks on you. You can start overthinking. But when you freestyle and it's coming from your heart, mm -hmm. it's how you genuinely feel, who's to say like how, how I really feel is wrong. Right. You can't tell me what I'm saying is wrong if I genuinely feel this way. So I make sure it comes from my heart. That's true. Yeah. At what point did you feel like, damn, yeah, like I, I know I, I know I'm good at music. Like I know this is, yeah, this I've is been feeling like that since I was <laughs> in fifth grade. <laughs> since fifth grade. Um, I, I 
always felt like that. Mm -hmm. I always felt like that because, I don't know, everything I tried just worked out for me musically. It just always worked out. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sing at all in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And people with my, my, my closest home, my, <laughs> my, I, I tell them to this day, they was like, yo, what you think you can sing? Like, bro, you, you can't sing, bro. Like, cut it out. And I wasn't the best, but I kept going mm -hmm. and kept going. And now, now you like, okay. they like, all right, bro. Right. But they didn't see the vision how I see it. You can always get better. <laughs> you can always get better if you're not toned up. Now, if you're toned up, mm. you just can't you just can't hear the note. Right. It's not gonna work miss, out for you. You're gonna miss it every time. But if you can hit a little note, blah blah blah, then you can, you know what I'm saying, just fine tune it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's some of your favorite artists? <laughs> favorite artists, my all time favorite is Jay Z. Okay. It's crazy, yeah. All time favorite Jay Z. Um let me give you an explanation why. Yeah. All right. I like Jay-Z because he he's a different type of being, right? <laughs> he's a different type of being. He can tell you a story so vivid. And the, the, the number one thing that I admire <clears throat> about Jay-Z is from the 90s up until now, he's always stayed relevant. Always. And that's hard for a lot of people to do. Mm -hmm. um, I like Drake. Mm -hmm. Drake was, when Drake first came out, he showed me that it was okay to you know, be in tune with your feelings and be vulnerable Absolutely. and see how you really feel. Because, you know, men have men have so much pride. And we have a wall up. Absolutely. And we like, yo, we see how we really feel about this girl we saw. But nah, he showed me like, yo, it's okay to tap in with that. Mm -hmm. And my newest favorite right now is Ron Wave. I like Ron Wave because he's just raw. Yeah. So much pain in his voice and his voice is so dynamic. Like, see, I'm an empath and that's why it's hard for me to listen to Ron Wave. I really be like... Oh, yeah. I, I feel it too bad. Like, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're always fired. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. If you could do any, like, if you could do a song with any artist, would it be one of those three, or are there any others that you that would come to mind for you? Yeah. No, it'd probably be like Adele. Mm hmm. Adele, like, yeah, because mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, I would love to do a song with those guys. Right. But, the type of person, the type of artist I am, I like to keep expanding my sound. I know I could do a song with them and, and blend right in, mm -hmm. but I want to, I want to work with people that's going to bring me outside of my show. Mm -hmm. you feel me? I love Adele. Yeah. I love Adele. What do you feel are some major events, uh, whether that's in your personal life or in the business side, that have propelled you to where you are now? It all started in fifth grade. Alright, tell me about fifth grade because it all started I need fifth to know. grade. It was this girl named Asha, right? Mm hmm First girl, first time I really liked somebody. You feel mm -hmm. me? So I didn't know how to approach this girl. So I'm like, yo, I gotta do something, right? So the day before that school day, I was at my grandmother's house. I wrote her a whole love note. I took my grandmother bracelet. I took some uh some tape, take the bracelet to the paper with the love note, folded it up. Next morning, got to school, stood in her locker. Mm. Whole day go by, she ain't say nothing. We stopped at a, at our lockers for lunch. I guess she didn't see it, right? All right, so cool. End of the day, I'm thinking, like, maybe she forgot about it. Like, mm. so I'm at my locker, you know, all the kids is in the locker. All, I mean, all the kids is in the hallway mm -hmm. at their lockers. So, blah, blah, blah. I get my book bag. I feel a tap on my shoulder. And I turn around, and it's Asha, right? Okay. And she's like, did you write this? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, you feel me? And she's like, rips it up, pops the no. bracelet. Just like broke my heart. All the kids in the, in the hallway just oh, like laughing at me. No. Yo, it was horrible. That was Fifth a, grade is when it started getting crazy yo, too. Like that's like. That was the longest bus ride home oh. ever. They was making jokes at me. And then I was going through stuff at home. Mm. I was going through stuff at home, so I really couldn't talk to nobody. So I was just in my room. And the only way I knew how to express myself, I just start writing. Mm. Start writing how I felt, how they treated me, like just my whole, everything I was going everything through at that time. Through. And the last two lines of what I wrote actually rhymed. And when I read it back, I was like, dang. Alright, cool. Let me That's try to go for real. So it turned into poetry. Mm. And then I was already into music. So when I found out that you can go on YouTube, you took uh, YouTube mm. started popping mm. and you can just like get the beat without the words. Yeah. <laughs> it 
It just went together like that. Oh, man, that's crazy. It's funny you say you went into poetry. I didn't know that, but I felt that listening to... Um, What's it called? Morgan State alumni. Yeah. I was just I like I like that song because it gives me poetry. Yeah. I didn't I didn't realize that that was like you know where it came from. Yeah, that's how I started. Poetry ain't last too long. Mm -hmm. Once I heard them beats, it was it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was it. That's hilarious. Yeah. What do you like to do in your spare time? Spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to go to um. I like to go to like uh. Like stuff that looks like the forest, okay, or like, or like trails. Nature. Yeah, nature. I like to catch sunlight. I like to walk barefoot through the grass. I like to pray. I'm definitely a barefoot through the grass kind of. I like to pray. I like to manifest. Take my deep breaths. Talk to God. Um, I like doing anything creative, and I love eating. I love food. Mm. I'm a food mm. What's your favorite so kind of food or restaurant? Uh, I don't have a favorite restaurant. Okay. But my favorite food, my favorite two foods are macaroni and cheese <laughs> and lobster. Those okay. Are my favorite two. Mm. Mac and cheese and lobster. Are you making time for love? Um, I have made time for love. That's great. Um, I'm not against it, mm -hmm. but I just got to find somebody that can be a contribution to what I got going on Absolutely. into my life. And not a hindrance mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. because um and another reason why i haven't really pursued anybody since the last person i dealt with is because uh especially women but mm -hmm. people in general they require a lot of time a lot of attention and if i feel like i can't give you a hundred percent of that mm. or a higher percentage of that why would i sit here and teach you like that mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm just considerate of people because i wouldn't want nobody to have step me right so Good point. Good point. Do you have in are we September, October, November? No. Next month we will be in fourth quarter of the year. Do you have any goals that you want to accomplish before the year over or any goals already set for next year? Um, I'm gonna be real with you. Mm -hmm. I just need you to respect this, right? No, yeah. I don't tell people my goals or what I got planned. Mm. Because if they don't know your dreams, they can't shoot you down. Mm. You're right. You just gotta just catch it. I feel just like, catch it, catch it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I yeah. feel that. And you had a really big year this year. You definitely thank don't want to spoil that. Thank you, thank you. How do you, um, your like your circle now? Like, what do you? What do, are the things that you feel like you get from them that help support you with your music and everything that you got going on? Where, for where you at right now? My circle. Uh. Go back and listen to Before Your Eyes Again. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I want to say um, my two main homies. Right. My right hand, 1942 Poppy. That's my dog and my cameraman, the mm -hmm. great Justino. That's what I got right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy with that. That's lit. I feel like mm -hmm. that's lit to even so be able to add that. That's it. You know, those pillars. You know, sometimes you try to bring people in and things start going good, but I don't know. I just feel like people don't... Uh, I, just, I, I feel like people don't uh, go about things as they should. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You know, I feel like the men these days don't know how to be men. And if they mm. have a problem with you, it's nothing that a simple conversation can fix. I feel, fix. That. Where, I feel like that's a feel everybody thing. Everything. Like That's just everything. If me and you have a, a situation where you feel a way about me, don't act funny towards right. me. Right. You get me saying? Like, Express just, yourself. Just let me know Tell what's me what going it is. on so I could... Because nine times out of ten, it was never that deep. Mm -hmm. You know, or it's just a misunderstanding or something that you might have heard from somewhere and you took it wrong. Like, mm -hmm. so just communicate with me. I'm a realist. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. As an artist, do you listen to your own music often? Nah. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't. love this question because I, yeah. I feel like I, I wouldn't if I was on. Yeah, it's like. Because I'm making like real emotion type music. Mm -hmm. Once I get it out, it's just like, ugh, all right. It's okay. On to the next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you keep listening to the same stuff that you're going through at that period of time, you kind of dwell in it. Absolutely. I don't like the that. Dwell. It's even like that when you got like a favorite song. Do you have a favorite song right now? Just in general? Like something that you like going to, like you get in a car, you straight putting it on. Like I don't have a favorite song. I have a favorite. Uh, time period of music that I go back and listen to. Okay, what's your favorite time I really period? I like early 2000s R&B. Me too. Like, that's my favorite. 
I like it better than the nineties uh, <coughs> R and B music. Oh, oof. Yeah. Okay. I feel like early two thousands was more so good vibes. Nineties R and B. It was definitely vibes. It was just like baby making music. Don't get me wrong. We love the baby making music, <laughs> really. but it's just. It's just something about having uh, certain things that's over-sexualized that just kind of uh, put mm -hmm. you in a box. Mm -hmm. I like good vibes, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I love the music videos from the early 2000s. I don't yeah. know. If, I mean, I don't know if everybody just likes the videos that were out when they were young, but I really, like, I will obsess over it so much to the point where I'm like, dang, I missed out. Like, oh, that was they so... They just like they was having so much fun. Literally. That's what I'm saying. Literally. Literally. So much fun. R and B in the early two thousands. They were standing in the middle of the rain. Like, mm -hmm. it, was, <laughs> it was really themselves. I wanted to ask you about um your acoustic performance. Yeah. Broke not broken. Broken not broke. Which one is it? <laughs> broke, broke. Everyone switches and everybody yeah. even talking to you switch it. Um talk about that and was that your only acoustic performance? Yeah. Okay, so, I like, I love those. Like those are my personal favorites. Thank so yeah. talk about what it was making that, filming it, like in that song itself too. Uh, broken, not broken. The the lyrics of the song it starts out with I woke up this morning with an attitude, got to my knees and thank the Lord for another day. Got to show gratitude. It's ugly outside, but it's money outside. Right? Yeah, that's lit. Yeah, so I woke up one day and I just was in my I wasn't feeling it like I just wasn't feeling it that day. And I knew that I couldn't step outside with that type of energy. So I had to pray. Dropped to my knees, had to show gratitude. And I knew that I had to go out there and get that bread, but before I got out there, I had to go to my therapy session and mm -hmm. get that off my chest with the mic. That's real. You feel me? That's so real. That's how the song came about. Um the title broke not broken is Everything in life is not going to be perfect, but you can't let it break you no matter what you're going through. Yeah. And everybody's version of being broke or broken is different. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes it's financially people are broke, but money don't make you who you are. Exactly. You feel me? And I feel like this generation, like people get so attached to money. Chase these days. money. Yeah, people get so attached to money. Don't get me wrong. Money is good. It helps you do what you got to do. It helps you pay your bills, but it don't make you happy in the long run. A lot of times. Especially on the inside, because it's like the root of all evil still. Yeah. It still brings separation. If you think about life, you think about Americans, no matter what uh, race group or minority or not, it's all about separation. Mm -hmm. The different scales, are you a high class, are you middle class, are you low class, you know what determines that? Income. Yeah. You feel me? So uh, that's just a little spread. Yeah. 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 My favorite song of yours is Casino. Yeah. Talk about the the video is fire. It's so cute. Thank you, thank and you. the song itself is just a vibe. Talk yeah. about making that video. Um, making that video. Uh the video was lit, you know, we started off with the dirt bikes. I knew that I wanted to tap in with Boston. Yes. I really wanted to get it. if you're not from Boston, I want you to get that feel. You feel me? To feel like you was dead. Mm -hmm. Um so uh, the video, what well, the song is basically just about show you I was dead one at the time. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So all your songs are like based on a true story. Oh, everything's real. I don't just wow. make stuff up. <laughs> I don't be making stuff up. I feel like that's kind of not authentic. Okay. I feel that. Yeah. I couldn't see myself going up there and performing a song I know it's not real because then I'm not enjoying it because I'm faking mm -hmm. it. I don't like faking. Okay. So yeah, the song basically about a shorty that um, Every time she started drinking, she started tripping on me. <laughs> I'm like, yo, that cops me with that shit with your feelings. You hopping on Twitter, seven, you sneak dissing. Mm -hmm. well, you gotta air about our business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just a sucker for attention. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I could have you know, made you make this song really yo, yeah, like, yo. Yo, for real. For another I'm moment, I'm just like, she tweeting about me, tripping. I'm like, here we go again. Oh my God. And it's perfect because we, like, I mean, some people want to admit it, some people don't, but here we have Casamigos culture. Like, yeah. it's definitely a thing. Even I work in nightlife, so I remember when everybody first started drinking it in Baltimore. Then everybody only drank that. Yeah. Then they took a little break because their bodies got used to it. Like, mm -hmm. 
it's just it's funny and I think it was right on time like your song it was yeah. right on time it made sense for the city I, I definitely got like yeah, the sure. Baltimore feel that she yeah. was reaching out <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that's let's talk about your um, I guess you call it your aesthetic as an artist do you feel like or are you behind everything you have creative directors you work with or is it just all you it's just me Mm-hmm. It's just me. Of course, I got you know my friends that have businesses, and I try to keep everything in house with my people. Mm-hmm. Um, like the great Justino, he's a my my cinematographer. Mm-hmm. He shoots my videos because I can't just be. Like, you can't. Like, you not, can't be behind the camera. Work, <laughs> but he gets me. Mm-hmm. He gets me, mm-hmm. and I, that's this is, this is probably the only person that I work with that I don't have to say it, and he knows. I love and that. I appreciate that. That's the be- that's I feel it. Like I get that for sure. Yeah, he knows. We got 1942 probably. That's my right hand. He uh he's my everyday person. Mm-hmm. Personally, been my best friend since third grade. He get on my nerves, oh. but he got my best interests. You feel right. me? That's right. uh, so yeah, he's really my my go to. That's who I did. Cool. Right. So as you know, this is a space where we are promoting Baltimore artists, Baltimore culture. What is the one piece of advice or tips or feedback that you want to give the Baltimore artists and to support them and help them come up? Um, the most important thing I can tell you is two things. I'm gonna always say give it to God, mm-hmm. find that relationship, rebuild that connection, and just give it to God. And number two, always be yourself. Never be too cool to be yourself. There's nobody in the world that's cooler than you. Absolutely. So embrace it. Bone won't need to dig it. Everybody wants to be gangster in the streets, but everybody ain't grow up like that. Yeah. Everybody wants to be their own idea of cool. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing cooler than being the person God created you to be. Literally. Like, that's it. You meet everybody you meet. Mm-hmm. Just tap into it. That's all. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's the video, y'all. <laughs> it's lit. Thanks for yeah. coming up here and please be. Thank you for having me. Please be.